Uh, so uh, today's speaker is uh, Junyang Cao, that is going to talk about uh, on the Ozawa Takegoshi extension theorem. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, so it's uh, uh, so it's my, my great pleasure to give a talk uh, in the Zoom algebraic geometry seminar. Uh, so today I will talk a joint work with Mihai Pan about the Ozawa Takegoshi extension theorem in the case. So one the sub variety is not a necessary smooth. Uh, um, um, uh, 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 so to begin with, uh, uh, so to begin with, I would like to first explain the motivation of our works. Um, uh, in our talk, we always suppose that X is projective. Uh, we always suppose that X is a smooth projective manifold. Uh, in fact, for most of our lots, it can be proved uh, in a much more general setting. Um, but for simplicity, we are, but for simplicity, we just assume that X is projective. And now let, a, now let a KX to be the canonical bundle on X. And uh, let Y to be a simple normal crossing divisor in X and let OY to be in the natural holomorphic line bundle associated to it. Now we fix a smooth uh, Hermitian matrix uh, HY on this line bundle. Um, now the third part is the holomorphic line bundle over X with a possible singular matrix HL, which uh, will satisfy certain curvature conditions, which, uh, which we will explain later. Then in this case, there is a, uh, then in this case, there is a natural question here to ask uh, once we have a holomorphic section, uh, small f on the sub variety y takes values in uh, takes values in this line bundle, which equals to kx tensors with l tensors with o y. Uh, once we have a holomorphic uh, uh, section over the sub variety y. The first question is to ask whether we can extend the uh, small f to the global uh, uh, space uh, x, so, uh, whether we can extend uh, The question two is to ask uh, if we can find an extension, then could we control the, uh, then could we control the norm of the global uh, section f or not? So we have these two basic questions. Uh, for these uh, two questions, uh, uh, it's totally solved in the case of one y is smooth. Uh, so for this one, it's so-called uh, the Dawsawa uh type of extension theorem. Um, so here I first stated here I first stated the local version of it. Uh, now we suppose that y is a weakly pseudo convex bounded domain in CM. Uh, uh, for simplicity, uh, so for simplicity, we just assume here that uh, omega is uh, uh, polydisc in CN, uh, and the letter H uh, to be an affine subspace in CN. Now letter uh, phi to be a PSH function uh, on the disk omega. That means that uh, phi is upper semi-continuous, and also its restriction on any complex lines um, in, in omega is some harmonic. Then in this case, um, um, uh, say in this case, uh, uh, the theorem uh, states that uh, for any holomorphic function uh, over the uh, op, uh, over the sub uh, of of the sub variety H intersect with omega. So for this one is smooth. Uh, for any hol holomorphic uh, 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 function with a control on its L2 norm, then in this case, we can find an extension. We can extend the small f to the uh, to the global space omega, such that its L2 norm of the big F is controlled by some uniform constant times uh, the, the, the L2 norm of the small f. So here for the constant C here, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, for the constant C here is uh, Uniform constant, uh, which is independent uh, of the choice of uh, the weight function phi and uh, the small f. Uh, so for this result, uh, it's in fact a very powerful result, uh, and uh, there is a lot of uh, generalizations of this theorem to the case, uh, uh, to the global case. So here, for simplicity, I just uh, mentioned 
a result of Hermann Vela, he proved the global version. In fact, for his route, uh, he can prove it in the case of 1x, uh, yes, weekly uh, pseudo, but yes, uh, weekly pseudo convex uh, uh, kind of manifold. But uh, for simplicity, I just uh, assume that x is projective. And uh, now we assume that y is a smooth divisor in x, uh, and the letter L be a holomorphic line bundle over x, uh, such that its curvature satisfies these two conditions, we, uh, which we will use it uh, all the time in this talk. That means that uh, the curvature of air is uh, semi-positive. H air might be a possible singular metric. Uh, and uh, for the curvature of uh, air is larger than some small constant delta times the curvature of OY. <clears throat> So, uh, so, um, uh, uh, so in the these two curvature conditions, uh, uh, how many value can prove that we can uh, we can extend the, the, the we can extend the uh, the holomorphic section over y to the closed space. This means that uh, for any holomorphic uh, uh, section small f of this uh, line bundle over y, such that its L two norm is bounded. So here, omega x is a fixed color metric on x. So therefore, omega x induces a Hermitian metric over um, on kx. So therefore, we know that for this value, it's a positive number, and it's a, uh, so for this one, it's a positive function, and here it's the value form um, of uh, of y. So therefore, for this integral, is well defined. Um, so, uh, so the theorem states that. Uh, so the theorem states that uh, if for, for the L two norm of small f is finite, uh, then in this case uh, we can find an extension to the total space X uh, such that uh, the L two norm of big F is controlled by uh, is controlled by this integral. So here I would like to explain a little bit of the notation here. Um, uh, so for the uh, so for the big F here, uh, uh, so for the big F here, it takes values in kx plus l plus oy. So therefore, uh, so, so therefore, uh, so therefore for, for this term, so therefore for this term, it's a volume form. So for the right hand side, uh, so for the left hand side is well defined. For the uh, for the right hand side, for the right hand side, sy is a canonical section of oy. Uh, which uh, vanishes uh, over y, and uh, we assume that, uh, and, and uh, we need also add uh, the normalization condition. That means that its uh, C zero norm is controlled by some constant that depends on delta. Delta, uh, the, so for, uh, so for the delta here, it's just uh, the delta in the curvature condition, and uh, we assume that uh, uh, we first. Uh, we first uh, take uh, uh, a canonic section of uh, OY. So therefore, we know that for the quotient here, it's well defined over Y. And uh, uh, so therefore, we know that for the quotient is well defined over by the junction formula, we know that uh, for the quotient, uh, it takes values in KY plus Y, uh, KY plus L. So therefore, we know that uh, for this term, is also a volume form over y. So therefore, for the right-hand side, it is also well defined. So for the theorem of Nohomovic-Mani uh, he states that uh, if the L2 norm of a small f for, for this time is, uh, is finite, then in this case, we can find an extension with a uniform control on its L2 norm. Now, I would like to explain a little bit here, uh, a little bit more here. Uh, 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 so, uh, so in this theorem, we have two norms of small f. One norm is uh, uh, one L two norm is, uh, is this one, and the one L two norm is this one. In the case of one y is smooth, uh, we can easily prove that uh, uh, we can easily prove that uh, these two L two norms um, uh, are equivalent. But in the case of one y is uh, not necessarily smooth. Uh, uh, in the case of one y is simple, uh, simple normal crossing, we, uh, 
the finiteness of this L2 norm could not imply the finiteness of uh, could not imply the finiteness uh, of this L2 norm. So for the, so for this part, I will explain it yet later. And moreover, I would like to remark that uh, uh, I would like to remark that by using the proof of the harmonic value, uh, it's easy to see that uh, if uh, if uh, if for the L two norm of this term is uh, if the L two norm if for the right hand side is bounded, even in the case of one y is not a smooth, we can always find uh, an extension such that its L two norm is bounded by this term. But in general, for applications, uh, the uh, for, but uh, in general for applications. Uh, in, uh, in general, we cannot uh, hope that uh, we have the finiteness of this L2 norm. Okay, uh, uh, so for the uh, so uh, so for the Osaka-Tekos extension theorem, in the case one y is uh, smooth, uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, it has a lot of applications. Uh, so, for example, uh, the Mai, uh, uh, the, so for example, the Mai use uh, uh, the local version. To prove that any positive, uh, to prove that any closed positive current can be approximated uh, um, by um, by currents with analytic singularities, and uh, so he proved the invariance of Lucas general in the in the projective case uh, by using Osaka extension theorem, um, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and in a paper of Guan and Zhou, uh, they. Uh, in a paper of Guan Zhou, they first approve uh, that uh, uh, they first approve an op uh, they first approve the an optimal version of Osawa Tickle's extension theorem, and by using their results, uh, they can prove uh, um, they can give a new proof of the positivity of direct images, and uh, more recently in a, a more more recently in a paper of Deng Wang Zhang Zhou. Um, by using the standard Osawa-Tekel extension theorem, they could also uh, prove for the positivity of direct images. Okay, uh, so uh, so here are some applications of uh, so here are some some applications of Osawa-Tekel extension theorem. In the case of uh, in the case of one, the sub right is smooth, uh, but uh, here we would like to be interested in the case of one y is not uh, smooth. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, it's uh, in fact closely related to the abundance conjecture. We recall first that the abundance conjecture um, let x to be a projective manifold, and we suppose that uh, the canonical bundle is numerically effective. It is therefore that means that uh, its uh, intersection with any projective curves uh, are semi positive saying so this case uh, the conjecture predicts uh, that uh, the canonical bundle is uh, semi ample um saying this case uh, uh, saying this case the conjecture predicts that kx is semi ample um um uh, so it's known that uh, for the uh, so uh, so there is a, so there is a well known approach to prove the abundance conjecture uh, 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 in fact for the abundance conjecture can be split in uh, in two steps the first step is to prove that uh, is to prove that uh, the connect window is quite effective maybe for the first step uh, is the most difficult uh, step and uh, for the second step uh, is uh, to prove the the following so-called the, the DRT extension conjecture, which can be uh, formulated as follows. Um, we suppose that X is a projective manifold and Y is a simple normal crossing and B is a KLT divisor. Um, uh, uh, so here we suppose that uh, for the support of B, Plus y is simple normal crossing, and, and b is KLT. And moreover, we suppose that uh, uh, kx plus y plus b is numerically effective, and it's equivalent to some co-effective divisor d, which satis uh, which satisfy uh, which satisfies uh, this inclusion. Uh, Say so in this case, the conjecture predicts that we have the subjectivity. Uh, of the restriction map, 
for M nay M sufficiently divisible. Uh, um, um, so in uh, so in a paper of the Maihi compound, uh, they proved that uh, if we could prove the non-vanishing curvature and the, the DRT extension curvature, then it will imply the abundance curvature. So uh, so it sets it uh, so sets uh, 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 so sets implies uh, so so sets uh, it play, uh, it explains the importance of. Uh, of this DX, uh, of this DRT conjecture, and uh, and uh, I would also uh, like to remark that uh, in the paper of the Michael compound, um, and they uh, they are uh, they observed that uh, for this uh, uh, they observed that uh, for this relationship, uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, in fact uh, it's in fact closely related. Uh, to the curvature condition one here, and also by using um, and also um, and also in their paper by using the orthogonal extension theorem in the case of one y is smooth, um, and they proved that uh, the DRT extension curvature holds in the case of one y is smooth. Um, for their proof, uh, uh, an essential tool is the orthogonal extension theorem with a uniform control on the L2 norm of big F. So therefore, in their proof, um, the assumption set Y is smooth it is a crucial assumption. So if we could generalize the orthotical extension theorem to the case of one Y is a simple number crossing, uh, same, uh, same probably by using, uh, same probably by using the similar argument of uh, deep, uh, of of the Maihi compound, we can prove the DRT extension conjecture. Uh, so that's the main motivation of our works. Okay, uh, uh, okay. Uh, so now in the second part, I would like to explain uh, uh, some results. Uh, uh, I would like to explain some results about the orthotical extension theorem in the case of one y is uh, uh, one y is a simple normal crossing. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so we cross that uh, we have in fact two questions. The first question is that once we have a small f which is a holomorphic section over the subgroup variety y, could we extend to the total space? Um, and uh, for the second one. Yeah, to ask whether we should, uh, whether we can control its L two norm or not. Uh, so for the first question, yes, in fact, uh, yes, in fact, uh, uh, for, so for the question, so for the first question, yes, in fact, very close to the, yes, in fact, very close to the injectivity uh, theorem, um, uh, but uh, yes, closely related to class injectivity uh, theorem. Um, and and and, uh, and in a paper of the Mai uh, and uh, and uh, and later improved uh, uh, in our joint work uh, uh, with the Mai and the Matsumura, uh, we can better have a positive answer to the first question. And for our result, it can be seen as a generalizations uh, of the uh, of the of the injectivity theory. Um, so here, uh, our theorem can be stated as follows. Uh, we suppose that X is a compact kind of manifold and Y is a simple normal crossing divisor. And uh, let uh, L to be a holomorphic line bundle that satisfies these two curvature conditions. Say in this case, uh, uh, um, say in this case, uh, given, um, say in this case, uh, given a holomorphic uh, uh, section over the subvariety Y, uh, such that its L2 norm is bounded. Uh, and also we assume that it uh, admits a local L2 holomorphic extension. Uh, for, uh, for this condition, I will explain it later. Say in this case, uh, uh, say in this case we can find, uh, uh, say in this case, uh, we can prove that we can find uh, a holomorphic extension of small f, such that its L2 norm is bounded. But uh, unfortunately, we cannot uh, have uh, an effective control on its L2 norm. That means that uh, we cannot control its L2 norm 
by the L2 norm of small f. Um, so let me explain a little bit uh, what are the meaning of uh, what are the meaning of uh, of the section f admits uh, a local L2 holomorphic extension. So that's just means that uh, so that's just means that we can find a sense thin cover of x. We can cover x by small uh, by small unit pros ui such that the restriction of small f on ui admit a holomorphic extension to the small ball ui such that uh, such that uh, uh, such that the L2 norm of fi is bounded. Uh, in fact, I will explain. Uh, uh, in fact, for this condition, is a necessary condition uh, to find a global extension. Uh, uh, in fact, in fact, if we can find a global extension such that its L two norm is bounded, then uh, then it uh, implies uh, automatically that uh, uh, small f will satisfy this condition. And uh, in general, uh, I will explain uh, in a few minutes uh, that uh, there is an Osawa, uh, there is an, an, an there is an example due to Osawa, uh, which explains that in fact, in general, in the case of one y is not a uh, uh, smooth. Uh, uh, in the case of one y is you know, in the case of one y is not a smooth. Uh, Say in general, of the finiteness of uh, then, then the finiteness of small f for, uh, for this term could uh, not imply that the small f satisfy this uh, local L2 extension condition. So for this, uh, uh, so for this local L2 uh, holomorphic ex extension condition uh, is necessary. Uh, 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 in the case one, why is simple normal closing? Um, uh, so here I, uh, so here I would not. Uh, so here I have no time to explain the proof of this result, uh, but I would just like to uh, recall that, uh, um, as I have explained before, under the under the assumption that uh, for this L two norm is bounded, uh, say in this case uh, we can find the holomorphic extension such that. Uh, uh, such that uh, for the L2 norm of BFGF is controlled by this term. But in general, um, but in general, in the case of one is, uh, in the case of one Y is not a smooth, uh, the finiteness of this term could not implies the finiteness of, uh, of this L2 norm. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so for simplicity, we assume that uh, Y is the union, uh, Y is the union of uh, two component uh, uh, y is defined by z1 times z2 equals to zero. And uh, we suppose that uh, hl and, and hy is smooth uh, and uh, f is not equals to zero on the original point. Saying in this case, we know that uh, for this L2 norm is bounded. But, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, for the L2 norm of this term, it's equals to, uh, it's, it's equivalent uh, to this integral. Uh, which is equals to infinite if f is not equals to zero on the or, on the original point. Yeah, uh, in fact, for applications, uh, in fact, for uh, uh, in fact, uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, for this example, it tells us that in fact, for applications, uh, the, the assumption set for this L two norm is bounded is too restrictive for for, for applications. So in general, we could not uh, assume this one. Um, and now I would like to explain an important example of Osawa, who tells us that in fact, uh, who tells us that in fact, uh, who tells us that uh, in fact, in general, if we just assume that, uh, if we just assume that uh, for the L2 norm of this uh, small f, uh, uh, for this L2 norm of a small f is bounded, uh, we could not explain, uh, we could not uh, hope to find uh, a holomorphic ex uh, extension with an effective control on its L2 norm. So for the example of our star is that, 
let delta to be a, a small neighborhood of, of the original point of C2. And uh, we suppose that Y is the union of two components. And the phi L uh, for the weight function phi L is equal to log Z1 minus Z2 square. And H uh, is equal to, to the exponential of minus uh, phi L. So in this case, let us uh, take a small effort, uh, let us let, let a small effort to be a holomorphic function over Y, which is equals to zero on one component and equals to Z1 on the another component. So in this case, it's easy to check that uh, for the L2 norm of a small f with respect to this weight is finite. But however, um, but however, we could not uh, hope to find uh, an extension such that its L2 norm is bounded. Um, um, we suppose by contradiction that uh, we could find uh, uh, a holomorphic extension uh, such that its L2 norm is bounded. Saying so this case, uh, that implies that uh, for this term is bounded. Uh, so therefore, for this, uh, so therefore, for this meromorphic function f divided by z one minus z two, uh, is a holomorphic function. But uh, by this uh, extension um, condition, uh, small f equals to zero on one component. Uh, that will imply that uh, for the quotient here, is equals to zero on one component, and uh, for the second condition will imply that for the quotient equals to one on another component. So we have a contradiction since on the, uh, since for this one on the original point, it equals to zero. And by this condition on the, on the original point, it should equals to one. So we have a contradiction. Uh, so here is an example uh, in case one phi air, uh, one, one phi air is singular. If we don't like the singular setting, uh, now we just uh, take uh, an approximation of uh, phi. We take a uh, phi epsilon uh, to be this term. So, uh, so for phi epsilon is smooth, uh, and we know that phi epsilon tends to phi error. Um, and uh, we suppose, uh, uh, and now, uh, and uh, and now, if we suppose that, uh, if we suppose that, uh, that uh, uh, if we suppose that uh, we can find uh, a holomorphic uh, extension of uh, small f such that its uh, L2 norm is uniformly bounded by the L2 norm of small f. Since therefore, um, and since therefore by letting epsilon tends to zero, we know that uh, uh, we know that we can find uh, we can find uh, an extension of uh, small f such that its L2 norm is bounded. So therefore it uh, contradicts uh, with our example. So for this example, it uh, tells us that, uh, so for this example, it uh, tells us that if we just assume that, uh, if we just uh, assume that uh, for the L2 norm of small f we is bounded, uh, then in general, we cannot uh, hope to find, uh, we, cannot, uh, uh, we cannot hope to find uh, an extension with, a, a, with an effective estimate. And uh, we can easily generalize, uh, uh, and, and, and by tensoring with uh, some ample bundle, we can easily construct a, a global version of Osawa's example. Uh, so therefore, uh, so therefore, uh, uh, so therefore, the Osawa's uh, example, uh, so for, uh, so therefore, by using Osawa's example, it tells us that in general, uh, in general. In, in general, for this L2 condition here, uh, it's not uh, sufficient uh, um, to find uh, an effective estimate on the extension section. Uh, and uh, as we explained before, if we use this L2 condition, it's uh, too restrictive for, for applications. Uh, so, therefore, uh, so therefore, in order to find the uh, same also, I take Gauss extension uh, uh, um, types uh, right out. So we need to find uh, some other type of norm of small f. So in our paper, we propose the following conjecture. As before, we suppose that uh, x is projective 
and y is simple normal crossing, and that the line bundle satisfies these two curvature conditions as usual. And then now, uh, and then now let uh, v singular be a small neighborhood of the singular locus of y. So since the y is simple normal crossing, the singular locus uh, is of co-dimension two in y. Uh, is of co-dimension two in x. And then now we suppose that uh, we have a, a section on the subvariety y such that its uh, L2 norm is finite uh, and also it uh, satisfies a local L2 extension. Same, uh, same as we have explained before, we can always find the, an extension. So we conjecture that, uh, we can conjecture, uh, so here we conjecture that uh, under the assumptions that uh, for, uh, and uh, under the assumptions that uh, the L1 norm of small f is finite near the single locus. So in this case, we can find a, a, a in this case we can find an extension such that its L2 norm is bounded. So that means that for uh, that means that for its L2 norm is controlled by some constant times the L2 norm of this quotient outside the single locus of y. So as we explained before. Uh, in the case of, uh, so as uh, we explained before, in the case of, uh, in the case of one y is smooth uh, for this L2 norm, uh, for this L2 norm, it's uh, equivalent uh, to this L2 norm. So outside the, the single locus of y, uh, the finiteness of, uh, uh, the finiteness of this L2 norm implies the finiteness of uh, this L2 norm. And uh, so here we need to add the Another term is the L1 norm of small f. Uh, in a neighborhood of the singular locus of y. Our conjecture is that if the L1 norm of this term is bounded, then in this case we can find a, uh, in this case we can find a, an effective estimate of uh, of the extension section. <clears throat> Uh, so that's our conjecture. Uh, in fact, if we could prove this conjecture, saying this case, uh, uh, saying this case by using the, uh, saying this case by using the same argument in the paper of uh, the Mike-Hakon power, we can probably prove the, uh, we can probably prove the DLT extension conjecture. Uh, um, uh, in fact. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, in, in fact, uh, in fact, if we, in fact, if we look at the, in fact, if we look at the paper of the Mike power, uh, we can see that in their proof for, for this finiteness of its L, uh, in fact, for the finiteness of the L one norm is a very natural condition uh, in their proof. So that means that if we want to prove the DLT. Extension conjecture uh, for this uh, for this uh, assumption on the L one norm is very natural. Uh, so so uh, so so that's why if we could uh, so that's why if we can prove this conjecture, then probably we can prove the DLT extension conjecture by using the argument of the Mike compound. And moreover, for applications, so we can also assume that uh, phi l, which is the weight of function of h l, is uh, of uh, analytic uh, is of uh, analytic singularity. Um, okay. Um, uh, so for this conjecture, uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, for this conjecture, we cannot prove this conjecture uh, in full generality, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, and in fact, uh, we don't know whether. Uh, in fact, uh, we don't know whether this conjecture uh, is true or false. Um, uh, maybe we can find uh, some. Con or maybe we can find find a uh, uh, some counter example of this conjecture. It's also totally possible. Um, but in our paper, we could only prove the a very special case of uh, this conjecture. We assume that. Uh, uh, we can in fact prove this conjecture under assumptions that uh, for the weight function is of this type of singularity. That means that uh, uh, that means that uh, if we look the weight function of H L um, near the singular locus of Y, if it's of 
this type is of the type of log s square plus uh, uh, some, uh, so plus uh, uh, so plus uh, uh, plus the waiter function uh, with respect to a conic uh, divisor and plus tau air. So here, uh, so here S uh, is any holomorphic function and uh, and uh, set one, set two until set n uh, is the coordinate of uh, B singular locus. Um, and the uh, tau air is uh, some bounded function such that its curvature is uh, strictly positive with respect to the conic matrix associated to this uh, conic divisor. So in this case, uh, under this assumption, we can prove our conjecture. So that means that uh, if uh, phi air is of this type, then we can find a holomorphic extension such that its L2 norm is bounded by the L2 norm of small f plus the L1 norm of small f. <clears throat> okay, so that's our main result. Uh, um, and I would like to say that, uh, uh, and I would like to say that uh, uh, since, uh, uh, since, uh, since in our world results uh, for the weight function is, uh, uh, is uh, too restrictive, um, by using our router, we could not prove the DLT conjecture, uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, so in the last, uh, um, uh, so in the last twenty minutes, uh, I would like to explain a little bit of the idea of uh, our proof. Uh, so for our proof, uh, so our so in our proof, uh, an essential tool is uh, is a result due to SU and the later. Uh, 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 and uh, and, uh, and uh, which is later uh, used uh, by Bob Edison um, to prove a Sawatic extension theorem. So in our uh, paper, we improved a little bit uh, the result. Uh, so as before, we assume that X is a projective manifold of dimension N. <clears throat> and for the line bundle L, it uh, satisfies the curvature conditions as before. That means that uh, that means that the curvature is semi-positive, and also its curvature is larger than than delta times the curvature of O y. And now let C to be a smooth n one form with values in L. Um, now let uh, star to be the whole star operator. Which sends the uh, which sends the n one form to n minus one zero form. Say so in this case, uh, 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 say in this case we can prove that. Uh, uh, say in this case we can prove that uh, the L two norm uh, of C over the divisor y is bounded. Uh, is bounded. Uh, is bounded uh, by the h one norm of C. Uh, so for this result, it's in fact uh, so for this result, it's in fact a quite a strong result. Uh, since for the right hand side, it's the L two norm, uh, it's the L two norm um, of a divisor which is of uh, real co-dimension cool two, and for the right hand side, it's only H uh, one norm. Um, but in fact, under assumption of the curvature on it uh, on L. Uh, we can in fact prove this lemma. Uh, um, so let me explain a little bit that the idea of the proof of this lemma. Uh, so here we take a t. Uh, so here we take t to be the star c, which is star c um, bar uh, with, res with respect to the matrix uh, on air. So therefore we know that. Uh, uh, so therefore, we know that uh, for t is in fact uh, uh, n minus one, n minus one form on the total space x, uh, and uh, uh, so he proved that uh, if we calculate the dd bar t, then in this case dd bar t is in fact uh, uh, is uh, in fact uh, equals to the right hand side here. So here is the curvature term which t c, and uh, so for the first term here is related to the derivative of C. Now we calculate, uh, uh, now we calculate uh, this integration. Um, 
now we can create a DSC integration. We know that for the rest, uh, we know that for the residual part of this integration, it corresponds uh, to the left hand side of this inequality. And uh, for the right hand side of uh, this inequality, uh, it, uh, it uh, came uh, from uh, it uh, came from the non uh, it came from the non residual part of this integration. Uh, together with the stocks formula and the um, uh, and the, the curvature condition on inequality uh, and and also this equality, yeah. Uh, so in fact, uh, for this inequality, it's in fact uh, a consequence uh, of uh, introduced equality here. Uh, so here we just explain a little bit of the idea of the proof of this lemma. Uh, now. I would like to explain the proof of our results. Um, uh, now we first take a, a C to be a test function, which is a smooth n minus, uh, which is a smooth n, uh, uh, which is a smooth n n one form with values in L over x. Now we take uh, the Hodge decomposition of C. That means that uh, C is equal to C one plus C two where C1 is debug closed, C2 is orthogonal to the space of debug closed. So therefore we know that C2 is in fact debug star closed. Now, as we explained before, under the curvature condition of L, we can always find an extension. Uh, we can always uh, extend the small f to the total space x but uh, in general, we cannot control its L2 norm. Um, um, but, in, um, but, uh, but in any way, we can always find uh, an extension. So therefore, we can always find uh, a holomorphic ex extension. So therefore, once we calculate uh, the D bar of this quotient, uh, it's a current uh, which is supported uh, um, on Y. Now let uh, us calculate uh, now let, uh, let us calculate uh, the product uh, of this current uh, with C. Well, we have already explained that uh, C2 is in fact debug closed. So even in the case uh, when the first part uh, uh, is a current, uh, which is, uh, uh, even in the case of one, uh, even in the case of uh, when the first part is current, uh, we can still prove that uh, the product of this current uh, with C2 is equal to zero. So therefore we know that for this uh, product is in fact equal to the product of this current with C1. Since for this current is supported uh, on Y and we can and we can calculate it, it explicitly, it's in fact equals to F4 divided by, divided by dSy over Y. So therefore for, uh, so therefore for this uh, product, it equals to this one. Now in the case, uh, um, now in the case one y is smooth, uh, thanks uh, thanks to this equality um, by using Cauchy inequality, we know that uh, uh, we know that for the L two norm of this term, we know that for this term is is controlled um, by the L two norm of a small f um, product uh, product with this term, as we explained before. If y is smooth, we know that uh, for the uh, in the case of y, y is smooth, we know that uh, for this L2 norm is bounded. So therefore, so therefore, we just need to control this L2 norm. How, but how to control this L2 norm? We uh, we just uh, we just uh, use this lemma. We know that for this L2 norm on the boundary y is controlled by the L2 norm of the derivative of C. So therefore, we know that uh, for the last term by this integral. Now, as a uh, now as C one in the Hodge decomposition, C one is debug closed. So therefore, we know that for this term equals to zero, and uh, for C two is debug star closed. So therefore, we know that debug star C one is equals to debug star C. So therefore, we know that. Uh, uh, so therefore, we know that uh, for the last term here is in fact equals to the integral of uh, log uh, 
uh, square sy times d bus dark c square. That means that for this, uh, that means that uh, for the, that means that uh, for this, uh, that means that uh, for uh, that means that uh, for this product uh, is in fact uh, controlled by the L two norm of small f times uh, uh, times the times the integral of d bar star c square. So therefore, by uh, so therefore by using this representation, we know that we can find some mu such that we have this equality for NXC, and also for the L2 norm of mu is controlled by the L2 norm of small f. Uh, so for this one, it's in the case of one y is smooth, uh, uh, because uh, uh, because if y is not a smooth. Uh, for this term is not finite. So here I first explain the case one y is smooth. So in the case one y is smooth, we know that for this term is finite. So therefore we can find a mu such that its L2 norm is controlled by the L2 norm of a small f. Now we uh, we have also this equality for mu. So therefore we know that uh, uh, mu times sy is holomorphic. And also by construction, we know that uh, the restriction of f theta over y is equals to the relational uh, section f. Now the difficulty is that uh, uh, now as we explained for the difficulty is that one y is not a smooth uh, for this the integral is not finite, uh, so therefore we cannot uh, find a, a mu. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, how we can st uh, so in this case how can we can prove our result? Uh, now, um, uh, now in the case of one y is smooth. Uh, you know, in the case of one y is not a smooth. Uh, we use a technique uh, um, uh, with uh, we use a technique uh, used by used by Donaldson Song, uh, and now we take a C to be a test of function. Uh, which is supported uh, outside the uh, out of uh, which is supported outside of the single locus of y. So that means that uh, here v is a uh, v is a small neighborhood of the singular locus of y, and the c is supported outside the v. The test function, uh, the text function we uh, which we take uh, is supported outside the v, and now we decompose the c to be c one plus c2 as usual. Uh, so here c1 is d bar closed, c2 is d bar star closed. So we suppose at the moment that, uh, so we suppose that, uh, we suppose at the moment that uh, for the product of this current with c can be controlled by some uniform constant uh, um, depending on f uh, times this term. Uh, uh, we suppose at the moment that uh, so we suppose at, at uh, so we suppose at the moment that we have this inequality. So in this case, we can finish the proof um, as in the smooth case. Why? Uh, that's because that uh, uh, that's just because that uh, since for this product is uh, controlled by uh, is controlled by this integral by this integral. So in this case, uh, as before, we know that we can find some mu. Such that we have this equality for any C whose support uh, is outside the V with a control on its L2 norm. So therefore, we know that. Uh, uh, so therefore, we know that uh, for d bar mu equals to equals to equals to d bar of uh, f uh, divided by S y outside the V. So therefore, as usual, well, so therefore, as before, we know that uh, mu times sy is a holomorphic section outside the v, and uh, it equals to f over y outside v. But um, but uh, um, but uh, by construction, we know that uh, v is a small neighborhood of the singular locus of y, and uh, we suppose that y is simple normal crossing. So therefore, the singular locus is of co-dimension two. By hard course, uh, we know that we can extend uh, the holomorphic section to the total space <clears throat> and uh, with a control on its L2 norm outside V. So that's finished the proof. Um, uh, 
social for uh, social for uh, social for in our uh, social for in order to prove our results, uh, and the main problem is to prove this inequality. The main problem is to prove this inequality uh, three. So how we can prove this inequality? Uh, how we can prove this inequality? Um, as we have explained before, uh, even in the in, even in the case one y is smooth, so we have uh, we still have this equality. Uh, the product of this current with c is equals to yeah, uh, is equals to the integral of uh, f over ds, which uh, which uh, which uh, which stack c one. So, uh, so now we split uh, the integral in two parts. One part is outside the singular locus of y, and uh, another part uh, is uh, close to the singular locus of y. So for the part uh, which is outside the singular locus of y, we can, still, uh, we can still use our lemma as before. That means that uh, for the integral, uh, for, that means that for the integral outside the, uh, outer, Outside of the, the the single locus of y, we know that we have uh, this inequality by using Cauchy equality, and uh, now uh, now as we explained before, uh, as we explained before by using our lemma, we know that uh, for for this term it can be controlled, it can be controlled by this term, it can be controlled, it can be controlled by this term. Uh, so therefore, we know that for this integral outside the, uh, the singular locus of y, it can be controlled by the L2 norm of the small f uh, outside v times this term. And uh, now the problem is to control the integral of small f with uh, star c1 over y, uh, over v. So in order, uh, so in order to control this integral, let us recall that uh, uh, by construction for the test function C is supported uh, outside the V. So therefore, we know that C one is equals to minus C two um, over Y. Now by Hodge decomposition, we know that uh, C one is debug closed. So therefore, um, uh, C one is debug closed. And uh, by this assumption, we know that uh, uh, d bar stack c one is equal to minus d bar c uh, is equals to minus d bar stack c two, and uh, c two is uh, uh, is d bar stack closed by Hodge decomposition. So therefore, we know that uh, c one is uh, is in fact d bar stack closed over v. So therefore, that means that uh, c one is in fact harmonic. So here C1 is in fact a harmonic function over V. So by using harmonicity, and uh, uh, so you, by using the harmonicity, we know that uh, the C0 norm of C1 is in fact controlled by the L2 norm of C1. And as we, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and of course that for the curvature of H, is larger than than some constant uh, times the conic matrix uh, um, over y. So therefore, we know that. Uh, so therefore, we know that uh, by. Uh, so therefore, we know that uh, by Buchner inequality, we know that uh, the L two norm of C one is in fact uh, controlled by the L two norm of the uh, stack C. So therefore, that means that in fact uh, for the C zero norm of C one over V is in fact uh, controlled by the L2 norm of, of d bar c. Is in fact controlled by the, the L2 norm of d bar stack c. So therefore we know that, uh, uh, so therefore we know that uh, for this integral uh, over y, uh, over v is in fact uh, controlled by the L2, uh, is in fact controlled by the L1 norm of small f times uh, this term. Uh, so that's the finished proof for, um, so that's the finished proof for, of this inequality. So therefore, as we explained before, uh, so it will imply our theory. Uh, thanks. 
So let's uh, uh, thanks uh, uh, Junyang uh, for the nice talk. And uh, are there um, any questions? So do you, um, do you know some other possible application of this uh, kind of uh, version of uh, Ozawa Takegoshi uh, beside the one uh, to, towards uh, abundance conjectures? Yeah. Yes, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so in fact, uh, so in fact, uh, so in fact, uh, so, in fact uh, so in fact, at the moment, uh, so in fact, at the moment, uh, we still want to find the same applications. Uh, uh, so for one possible, uh, uh, so for one possible application, uh, yes, uh, to study, to study the case uh, one, uh, once we have a fi once we have a vibration such that its central fiber is single normal crossing. Uh, uh, so in this case, we would like to extend the. Uh, in this case, we would like to prove the invariance of blue case general. In the case one, the central fiber is yes, simple normal crossing. Um, um, uh, so for this case, uh, um, so for this case, uh, uh, so for this case, uh, we have uh, some hope, uh, but uh, we still have have have, uh, but uh, we have uh, still some difficulties. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, so better. Um, uh, so in fact, uh, so for the main problem is yes, that uh, for uh, so in fact uh, for the main problem is yes, that in fact uh, for our case, uh, uh, in fact uh, for our results uh, we need to assume that uh, in fact uh, for our case we need to assume that uh, phi error yes of uh, phi error yes of uh, phi error yes of uh, this type of singularity, mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, and uh, we in fact uh, um, and and and. and uh, also, for the main difficulty is that in our results, uh, for the constant c, it depends on the uh, it, uh, it depends on the geometric uh, it depends on the geometric of the conic matrix associated to this conic divisor. Uh, so that's the main main difficulty. Uh, in fact, for uh, in fact uh, for applications, uh, in fact, uh, I think that if we want to prove the DRT extension conjecture, uh, what a uh, what uh, we really need uh, is uh, to find uh, some routes uh, such that uh, for the constant here, uh, it's uh, independent of the conic, uh, uh, it's independent of the geometric of the conic metric. I see. So, which kind yeah. of uh, dependence uh, this uh, C has uh, in, you said, in terms of the geometry of the conic metric, which kind of properties of this metric? Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so here, uh, so, so here, uh, so for the proof here, uh, so, so it's in fact, uh, so for the last step, uh, in fact, uh, for the last step, uh, so here we should assume that uh, it's a C0 norm is controlled by the L2 norm of this one by using the harmonicity. So it's uh, in, uh, so it's uh, in this step that uh, we need uh, to use the geometric of the conic metric. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in fact, uh, so in fact, uh, uh, so in fact, uh, if we can prove this inequality uh, uh, for some, some uh, for some constant uh, c, which depends uh, only on which depends uh, only on which depends only on v, but uh, with, but uh, which is independent uh, of the conic metric. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, if we can prove this inequality for some constant c independent of the conic metric. Uh, but uh, which depends only on the uh, same. Uh, if we can put this one, uh, say in this case, I think that uh, we can prove our conjecture. But in general, I think that it's quite difficult. Uh, if we, uh, since uh, for the harmonicity of C1, it's, uh, it, it depends on uh, it depends uh, on HL, so uh, uh, so it's quite difficult. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? So uh, if not, we can thank uh, Jungyang again and, uh, and, and hear the meeting. <laughs>
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah, I quit. Uh... <laughs>